Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing hypoxia, especially the first part of hypoxia. And if you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us. And with that being said, let's discuss hypoxia by first discussing cellular injury. Our cells can get injured when our cells' ability to, uh, the, the, when the level of stress exceeds our cells' ability to adapt to that stress. Essentially, when our cells are under an amount of stress that they cannot handle, our cells are going to get injured. That is very important to understand. Now, there are many different ranges to the injury that our cells undergo. You can have mild injury, which could be essentially reversible, or you can have severe injury, which is irreversible. Now, the extent of the injury is going to depend on the type of the cell, the type of the stress, as well as the severity of the stress, which is a very important factor in cellular injury. You do have certain cells in your body, like your neurons, that are very susceptible to stress, and they're not able to adapt to that stress very easily, whereas you have other cells in your body, like your muscle cells, that are able to adapt to stress very well, and they're very resilient to stress. So there are many causes of cellular injury that we're going to talk about, but today we're going to focus on the first one, which is hypoxia. But you should know that there are other causes like inflammation, malnourishment, genetic mutations, as well as the, the obvious, which is trauma. So right now, we're going to start talking about hypoxia. And we're going to discuss hypoxia briefly and then talk about a little bit of the causes of hypoxia. And then in the next video on hypoxia, we're going to finish up discussing the very high yield facts of hypoxia that you have to have a good understanding of. Let's discuss hypoxia, though, right now. Hypoxia is essentially a condition where your body or a region of your body, it doesn't have to be your entire body, it can also be a region of your body uh, that is deprived of enough oxygen. Essentially, at the tissue level, you do not have enough oxygen oxygen. So you have low oxygen being supplied to your tissues. That is what hypoxia is. It's an overarching, you know, uh, understanding an overarching pathology that's happening at the tissue level. Now, when it comes to hypoxia, essentially, like we said, it is low oxygen delivery to the tissues. But what is that doing, right? You need to think more deeper into this. What happens when you have low oxygen delivery to your tissues? Well, you need to remember that at a certain point, every tissue you have is dependent on oxygen. Every tissue, even the ones that are more resilient to uh, cellular injury, that are more resilient to hypoxia, are still dependent on oxygen. Very important. Why is that the case? Well, that it is because it, oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. Very high yield. Don't forget that, right? Go back to biochemistry. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. Therefore, a lack of oxygen right? A lack of oxygen is going to lead to impaired oxidative phosphorylation. <laughs> yeah, you thought you forgot about this, right? It's going to lead to a impaired oxidative phosphorylation because you do not have the final electron acceptor to accept the electron. And thus, you're going to have low ATP. That is very important. That is the hallmark. That is something you cannot forget. Low oxygen leads to low ATP. And in hypoxia, your cells have low ATP and thus they are getting damaged. They are not able to adapt because they cannot create the ATP that they need to adapt. Very, very important. Now, there are several different causes of hypoxia, which are ischemia, hypoxemia, and decreased oxygen carrying capacity. These two these two causes of hypoxia are going to be discussed in part two because you need enough time to focus on these lectures, these concepts by themselves. These are very high yield. Right now, we're going to discuss ischemia and then wrap it up. And then in part two of hypoxia, we're going to be discussing hypoxemia as well as decreased oxygen carrying capacity. I highly, highly recommend you guys watch that video because it will help you solidify these concepts and help you understand what is happening in hypoxia overall and specifically in different causes of hypoxia like hypoxemia and decreased oxygen carrying capacity. So with that being said, let's just dive into today's cause in this video, which is ischemia. We're going to talk about ischemia right now and then wrap it up. So ischemia is something you probably already know what it is, but ischemia is essentially insufficient blood flowing to an, an organ or to a tissue. You do not have enough blood going to the tissue. You do not have enough oxygenated blood. We should have written that. You do not have enough oxygenated blood oxygenated blood going to a tissue. Now, there are three main mechanisms of ischemia. The first mechanism is going to be decreased blood going to an organ, which is an arterial blockade. So let's just draw this out so you guys can get a better understanding. This is a kidney. This is your renal artery. Okay, I'm going to make that a little bit thicker. And then this is your renal vein. Okay, I'm going to write 
artery and your vein. Okay, so in a arterial blockade, you are blocking the, the artery, right? Which means you do not have enough blood going to an organ and that's going to lead to necrosis and ischemia. Essentially, it's going to lead to ischemia and then necrosis. But you are damaging your tissue because you have insufficient blood flowing to an organ. That's one way of causing ischemia. Another way of causing ischemia is decreasing blood leaving an organ or going from an organ. This would be a venous blockade. So let's say you have the venous system right here blocked, right? The, the, the main vein is blocked. Well, that means that you're going to have a back pressure build up of blood right here. All of this is going to build up. And essentially, when you think about it from the venous uh, side, it's going to cause the arterial blood that's going to be coming into the kidney to get back backed up and you're going to have another cause of ischemia. You're not getting enough oxygenated blood like I wrote earlier to the tissue. This is all happening because you have decreased blood leaving from the organ hence a venous blockade. So that's the second mechanism. And then the third mechanism is generalized shock, right? So if you have shock, you're going to have a generalized decrease in perfusing your organs overall. And because you have a decrease in perfusion, it's just not going to let enough blood get to it. It's not something blocking it. It's just there's not enough pressure pushing the blood to the organ. These are the three main mechanisms of ischemia. Now, ischemia can be caused by an embolic event, like a heart attack that essentially causes a type of shock, right? And uh, Or you can have an emboli occurring in a actual artery or even a vein, you can have a thrombus form, or you could have trauma, trauma at the tissue level resulting in damage to the vasculature that's going to cause ischemia as well. So let's say if you end up somehow cutting the renal artery or the renal vein gets cut, right, you're not going to have uh, enough blood going to or from an organ. Essentially, it's the same thing. Trauma and emboli are the main causes of ischemia, and that's pretty much everything you need to know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative, and we'll see you back here real soon.